We thank you for beginning with us already. I know that, Lord, you are beginning to heal and deliver and set men free from every captivity and every darkness in our lives is already giving way because when we come into your presence, we do not remain the same. Therefore, my Father, even in this moment, oh God, your word giveth light and understanding to the simple. I ask, oh God, that you will do just that for us today. That you will lighten our every path of darkness in the name of Jesus. That you will grant us understanding, oh God. That you will grant life, oh God, Father, in every area that the devil is perfecting our lives. Lord, we give you praise. We worship you. That at the end of this meeting, it will be evident that we have met with Jesus. And our lives will not remain the same. Thank you, our Father. Welcome into this assembly. Take your place and make for yourself a great name. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name, have we prayed. Can we celebrate? Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 You may be seated. Welcome to church. Amen. Welcome to church. Can you help me celebrate praise ambassadors? I almost called them Shabbat. Praise ambassadors. Celebrate them. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. I want to thank God for his presence in this house and for his grace upon this commission. Uh, how many of you were blessed during the revival? Flames of revival. Awesome, awesome meeting. Amen. And also, how many of you were blessed at Back to Better? Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. We just want to thank God for what he did in our midst. We want to thank God for all the wonderful, beautiful, you know, adorable women that came into the presence of God. When king's daughters gather, God is present. Amen. Hallelujah. But thank God that in this house today, both king's daughters and king's men are here. Praise God. Hallelujah. And he will be visiting us in mighty ways in Jesus' name. I want to thank all the leadership, the leadership of World Assembly and, um, I mean, Dominion House. Uh, did I say Dominion House? Vision House. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you all for what you do and your sacrifice and giving to the work of the Lord. I trust that the Lord will honor every single one of you in Jesus' name. Pastor Isi and Pastor Ibi, I salute you and I appreciate God in your life in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Our senior pastor is not here because he's somewhere in another church ministering and being a blessing to the people of God. We trust that God will be using him mightily in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. This morning we are looking at a recipe for marital harmony. By the way, I want to thank the just couples for allowing us yesterday to take their time to have time in God's presence. So today we just felt we should look at, you know, a recipe for marital harmony praise god so that we will have a, a you know a taste of maybe what we we'll have had in uh, just couples and i know when it will come up we will yet be blessed in jesus name all right so we're looking at recipe for marital harmony recipe for marital harmony this is not just for married people both singles and married will be blessed by it. And I trust that as the word comes, the word will locate you where you are in the name of Jesus. By the end of this meeting, I'll be praying for every marriage. And I'll be praying for the singles. Because we trust God that God will help us to glorify his name in our lives and in our marriages in the name of Jesus. That whatever the devil is fighting in our marriages. You know, the devil doesn't like anything good. Amen. He hates anything good. And the purpose of God is to make our marriages heaven on earth but the devil is going he's been fighting it and he will keep fighting it but I trust God for you and I that we will enjoy harmony in our marriages in the name of Jesus and that thing the devil is looking for he will not have it in Jesus name we will prevail over him in the name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah look at somebody and say you look good amen relax just let the person relax Relax, relax. Jesus is here. Amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes when we come to the presence of God, we look too, you know. Amen. Apart from looking too, shh, we also look too serious. Praise God. Hallelujah. So this morning, you don't need to look too serious. Amen. But receive the word of God. Praise God. Because God is a loving father and he wants us smiling all the time. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 
What do we mean by harmony? Harmony is to enjoy bliss in your marriage. Harmony is to enjoy bliss in your marriage. To have, to have tranquility in your marriage. To have an one accord for you and your partner to live in one accord. To live in unity. To live in, you know, conformity to one another. And also to live in peace with one another. And funny enough, or, or interestingly enough, one of the attributes or characters of our God is that he's a God of peace. Amen. He's a peacemaker. He's a God of peace. One, um, uh, in, the, in the fruits of the spirit, the Bible says the, the character and the nature of God, one of it is that he's a God of peace. Hallelujah. And so he wants peace to reign in your home. Amen. He wants you to enjoy your home, to enjoy your spouse. And that shall be your portion from today in the name of Jesus. I pray that every marriage being harassed, today shall be the end in the name of Jesus. One fact about, you know, any good thing or any good marriage is that they are made to happen. Praise God. No marriage happens just like that. Amen. No happy marriage happens just like that. They are made to happen. Both parties in the marriage have to make up their minds that this marriage will work. Praise God. And do everything it will take to work. So it's not just, you know, let me just relax. My marriage, everything will work. No. No. You have to do something. And I trust God that he will open up our minds to see those things today in the name of Jesus. Because even in every challenge, in every problem in life, the, in, in every reproach in life, every reproach will answer to the right approach. Like our senior pastor said, every reproach will answer to the right approach. Amen. When we give it the right approach, it will answer. Praise the Lord. So that reproach in your marriage will answer to the right approach in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Why do we need marital harmony? Praise God. Do we, why do we really need marital harmony? I want to share a few of them with you and I will run through the rest. If you can write, you write and maybe if you can watch it, you watch it later. The first reason we need ham, uh, marital harmony is that it maximizes the purpose for marriage. Marital harmony maximizes the purpose for marriage. Your number one purpose for marriage is to get help from your spouse. That is written in Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. The Bible says, and God looked at man after he made man. He said, this man is not good alone. Let us make for him a help meet, a help suitable, a help qualified, a help in the same frequency, in the same level with him, to reason together with him. Let's make the right kind of help for him so that both of them can reason together at the same level. You know, I, I, I just wondered one day, if God had told Adam, pick one of the animals, you know, or if God didn't bring Eve and God said, choose one of them to be your partner. I wonder who he will have chosen. Have you ever wondered? Praise God. I, when I was thinking through the night, I said, maybe the gorilla. Gorilla looked... <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. But God knew better than him. Amen. God decided to create somebody just like him. Praise the Lord. So that together they can fulfill purpose in life. That's one of the reasons marriage, mari uh, marital harmony is very important for you and I to fulfill purpose in life. What is that purpose in your life? You know, different. every one of us, just our faces, as our faces are different, so is the purpose of God for our lives. Amen. Some of us have been called to be pastors, praise God. You know, some of us have been called to be engineers. Some of us are business people. God will give you that man and that woman that will fit into that assignment well and help you accomplish that purpose. That's one of the reasons we need harmony. Praise God. That's one, I mean, that's one of the reasons for, you know, uh, um, uh, reasons for marital harmony. So that we can together... You know, because if you don't have somebody who is peaceful, who understands your purpose, you know, you will not be able to enjoy harmony in marriage. Praise God. It, it will be difficult to enjoy harmony in marriage. Amen. Amen. You know, that's why as a pastor, if you know where you are going in life, you know how to pray for your partner. Praise God. You know how to pray for your partner. So as a single lady, don't just sit there and say, you know, anybody that comes. It's not anybody that comes. Okay, all of them comes. Who, who are amongst them? They are demon chasing, you know, tongue talking, all of them. But one person is the one that God has chosen for you. You need to know what your purpose is. 
A pastor will pray for somebody who is a pastor's wife material and understands where he's going to help him go there. Praise the Lord. That's why we are in each other's life, to help us fulfill the purpose of life. That's, that will help us to, ha I mean, to enjoy marital harmony. Secondly, the second reason we need marital harmony is because it helps us to do better in life. Marital harmony helps us to do better in life. When there's joy, when there's peace in your home, it helps you and I to do better in life. We see that in, in um, okay, maybe I should give an, let me just give an illustration of the geese. You know the geese, the geese are a set of birds. They fly in a V formation. The geese, they fly in a V formation. The interesting thing about the geese is that as they are flying, they have one person leading. And when the person is tired, what they do, they honk as they go. You know, what, what they do is that the person in front goes to the back and somebody else comes to the front because that way they are able to change leadership in, in the place of their, you know, of their sojourning or their flight to wherever they are going. And that way they are able to fly farther than a lot of other birds because there is this encouragement they give one another as they are in that V formation. They give each other so much encouragement that they fly very far. And when they get to a particular place, when they are tired, they rest and they take off again. Praise God. Have you ever heard the saying that if you want to go far, fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go with people. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you want to go far, go with people or go with your spouse. I trust that God will take us far in life in Jesus' name. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9, the Bible says two is better than one because they have good reward for their labor. Two is better than one because they have good reward for their labor. Amen. The one that interests me, you know, most or, or gets me excited the most is Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 30. Deuteronomy 32 30. It says, one shall put to flight a thousand, but two shall put to flight ten thousand. Can you see the mathematics? Amen. One shall put to flight a thousand, two, how many? Oh my God. Praise God. Look at the equation. One, one person to one thousand, two to ten thousand. That's what God can use you and your spouse to do when you walk in harmony. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Make no mistake about it, couples. Amen. When there is no harmony in your home, you are not getting the best out of the home. You may be doing well, but you are not getting the best. When there's no, in fact, the truth is that when those, there's no harmony, you can't do very well. Praise God. You can't do well. Amen. That's what we are saying this morning. When there's no harmony, you can't do well in your marriage. But when there's harmony in the marriage, both of you hold, even, you know, I'm coming to that. Let me not jump, let me not jump my slide, uh, my, uh, my point. You know, both of you, hold, you know, do things together and you get, you get better results. Because there's somebody telling you, why don't you look at it this way? Why don't you do it this way? And we must learn to listen to one another. Praise God. Hallelujah. Don't just say you don't have a say. Make that person, that woman God has given to you, or that man God has given to you, is to help you fulfill destiny and to do better in life. So listen. Let's talk to one another. Let's discuss together. How can this thing give us the maximum production that we ought to get from it? Praise the Lord. And you see yourself producing more and more in Jesus' name. Wherever area you have been slowed down in life, may the Lord give you speed in the name of Jesus. As you enter into harmony with one another, may the Lord give you exponential speed in the name of Jesus. Even Jesus could not send his disciples to go and preach alone. He sent them two by two. Praise God. Haven't you seen that? You see that in Luke chapter 10 verse 1. Jesus sent them out two by two to go and preach the gospel. Amen. He said go in twos. Praise God. Why should they go in two? twos? Uh, thank God for you know, the work time mark this morning. But, uh, the, the, the King Archie said to us, gossip a little. Praise God. I don't know about that. Don't quote me on that. Praise God. Hallelujah. But the truth is, when two people are working together, there will be, you know, some, oh, how are you? You know, kind of discussion. You, you won't even know when you are covering grounds. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
I know evangelism is not just discussing, but yes, moving from one house to the other, you could talk on some things, or you know, it's just an encouragement with one another. And as you are ministering the gospel, somebody is by your side, you know, preach, I mean, praying along with you to give effectiveness to what you are saying by the help of the Spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So let's even leave evangelism now. Anything you are doing in life, when you have somebody, you know, who is always by your side, encouraging you, you can do much more in Jesus' name. Somebody said, if the, if the wise men were women, praise God. I'm not sure the wise men, they, they talked so much when they were going. There. Where, is the, where is the king that was born? Where is the man that was born king, you know, of the Jews, you know, and they, and they went to spare. Hey, when they got to, the, to, to Jesus, they gave him, you know, all the gifts they brought and they left. Hmm. If it was women, eh? If it's yeah, yeah. Amen. They would discuss so much. Praise God. Hallelujah. Did you see the baby? Hey, I pity that boy, yo. Eh? Ah, maybe we'll make pepper soup and bring for the mother, sha. You know, so that she can take care of the baby. They will talk all kinds of things and thank God for women. They always make things happen. Clap for women. Clap for women. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Number three, marital, reason why we need marital harmony is because it enhances victory in every battle. Amen. It enhances victory in every battle because our marriages will constant, constantly have battles. Praise God. Just like you are now on, are on a battlefield on earth, so is our marriage. The devil is constantly, want to, constantly wanting to pull down every marriage. You know, couples, can you, will you agree with me that there are things we quarrel about that we just ask ourselves, is it, how did we get into this fight? You, you, when you are done, it's like, how did we get into this fight? This was nothing. I mean, I mean I've counseled many marriages, and I'm like, many couples, I beg your pardon, I'm, and I'm like, I don't know, I, I'm not even seeing what, you know, what is worthy of quarreling over in this, in this discussion. And they go up, and, I mean, sometimes you have to be quiet for them to, to really, you know, express their anger. Praise God. And at the end of the day, when you just tell them, but you should have done this, you should have done this, I see, I see. It's just the devil. It's just the devil. Praise God. That's why we must work together in harmony because it helps our victory. If you read Ephesians chapter 6, you know, from verse 10 to 17, it talks about the whole armor of God. The whole armor of God. Do you know that there was, there's, nothing, there's nothing covering the back? There's the, you know, gospel uh, feet shut up with, uh, with the gospel of truth. There's the breastplate of righteousness. I mean, there's a, there a you no know, covering for every part of our body. There's a two covering our body. But the back, nothing is covering the back. Can I have a couple here? Can I have, let me tell you why that is. Can I have a couple? A couple. Is there no couple? Praise God. We have couples in the house. Come on. Come on. Praise the Lord. I want to do a demonstration. <laughs> no, 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 that's not. Please come up. Please come up. He's not standing up and sitting down. <laughs> Amen. Now, let me tell you why there's nothing covering the back. Because God expects you and your partner to cover each other. I will show you that. They have, they have something, you know, on their hand, the sword of the spirit. They have the breastplate of righteousness. They have their feet protected. They have everything protected. But the back, nothing is protecting the back. This is what God will want us to do. Back each other. Because this is how battles are fought in those days. I'll show you. This is how battles are fought in those days. Both of them have their sword. You have to demonstrate now. Sir, please come this way. Praise God. Let them see you. Ah, okay, back each other. Okay, now, demonstrate with your hand. You have, a, you have a sword. The devil is trying to fight you. Is this how you do? I mean, you know? Yes, you are fighting, you know? That's in the realm of the spirit now. We are dealing with the devil in the realm of the spirit. Now, you see now that if, for instance, can he see whoever is attacking him from this end? Can she see whoever is attacking her from this end? Who sees the person attacking her from this end? Her husband. Who sees the, the person attacking him from this end? The wife. And that's why God says we must, we must walk together. That's why the back is not protected. Because you are meant to protect each other's vulnerability. 
Praise God. Thank you, Sama. Praise the Lord. Amen. So you can see it's not standing and sitting. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, so, so you are meant to protect each other's vulnerability. Where you don't, you can't protect yourself. Your partner protects you. Your partner is the one that defends you. That's why we need harmony in marriage. That's the reason for harmony in marriage. Because it enhances victory in every battle. That's why the scripture says, it's we wrestle not against flesh and blood, not I wrestle. Praise God. It's not I wrestle against flesh and blood. It's, what is it? We wrestle. So when you have somebody fighting with you, the battle is easier to win. Amen. It's easy. I mean, there's, there's even a confidence that comes over you when you know that your partner is fighting with you. Can you just imagine as a man waking up in the morning and you, say, you, you hear your wife saying, God bless my husband. Not because she's saying it for you to hear. She does it every day. Praise God. Hallelujah. Just like the daughters, the king's daughters, we be, are beginning to pray for their husband. We have been praying for you. But mightier things are beginning to happen in your lives in Jesus' name. So together, both of you fight together. You fight because you know how to protect each other. That's why you can't go to public and be messing up your partner and saying things about your partner because that area of our vulnerability, that area is of his vulnerability, you are meant to be a defense for him or her. You are meant to be a defense for him or her. Don't join people. Some people will even back. They will join people to, to castigate, to, to, to you know, say terrible things about their husbands or terrible things about their wives. Even when there's something going on in the house, God does not expect you to wash your dirty linen in public. Praise the Lord. There are things you take, of course, if there are things you need to take to pastor and explain for counseling, not because you want to pull down your husband, not because you want to pull down your wife, but because you want to help him. But are there no wives who pull down their husbands? Are there no husbands who pull down their wives today? That's not why you are there. Amen. Amen. And if you want harmony in life, you know, harmony in your marriage, you will learn to defend each other. I'll run through the rest before I go through the recipe, okay? Um, number, number four is um, subsequent marriages are not likely to, I mean, subsequent marriages are likely to fail. That's why you need harmony in your marriage now, amen? That's why you need harmony in that one you are in right now because it's not greener on the other side, praise God. Hallelujah. I want to get out. I, in fact, I'm done with this man. I am done. I'm done. I want to look for somebody. I said, hmm. uh, the, the problem you didn't solve in this one is waiting for you in the next one. Oh. Praise God. And there are fewer marriages, second, third, or fourth marriages that are succeeding than the first one. Praise God. Fewer ones that are succeeding. So that one God has given you. A story was told of a man that pushed his wife out. You must get out of this house. The woman got out, he brought another one in, and in one year he was gone. He died. He died in one year. One year. Somebody said if he knew he was going to die, he would have just kept that woman at home and managed that one year so that he can meet God. Amen. Because right now we don't know if he will meet God. Praise God. Hallelujah. So that marriage God has given you, hold it firm. Praise God. Hold it firm. War, fight, if you need to fight on your knees. The problem I have with people is that they are not ready to pay the price. There are marriages now, in fact, there are some now, it's only the grace of God that is making me continue in that counseling. Because you tell them one thing, they go and do another, they bring it back to you. You tell them another thing, they go and do another, they bring it back to you. And I'm like, my time is too precious for this. Praise God. I love you. I want to pray for you. I want your marriage to succeed. But hey, if you can't obey simple instruction, then there's no reason you're wasting my time. Praise God. Pray. And it's time for you to stop running from pillar to post. You face God on your knees. If God gave you that marriage, he can sustain it. So go on your knees and say, Father, I need this thing changed like the king's daughters as we decreed yesterday. I need this marriage issue. I need this problem solved, Lord. I decree by the power of the Holy Spirit because it's inside of you and it will make it happen for you in Jesus' name. It is an atmosphere for the, for the move of the Spirit. 
you know, when the, where there's harmony, the Spirit of God can move freely and fully in the name of Jesus. You know, um, he does not truncate the destiny of your children. He helps you to live long and not die prematurely. He helps you to live long and not die. The one, the one I said, the next one, which is, it, it helps not to truncate the destiny of your children, gets to me all the time because my father had four wives. And can I tell you the truth? It's, it's God that brought us this far. Praise God. And I know many children whose destinies have been messed up because daddy and mommy could not stay. They couldn't live in harmony. And so the children, you know, the vicious circle, circle continues. The children, the children too, you know, they are in another marriage and it's not working. Praise God. But the, apart from even getting into marriage, some of them cannot even, you know, the children don't even have a future. They don't have a direction in life. Because mommy and daddy are too selfish. I mean, there are marriages, two years, three years, you know, even one year, six months, I want out. There are irreconcilable differences. Hey, I don't know where they got that word from. Praise God. Amen. Because it's not from the Bible. Amen. The Bible says, with God, all things are possible. What is it? And can I shock you? A lot of them are pastors and their wives. Say, I am done with this woman. I've managed her for 10 years. You manage her for 10 years and change her figure. Now you want her to go out. Praise God. Like I always tell my husband, see what Ibn Jesus did to me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I, I, I thank God for it. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. But you know every woman wants to be like Pashanti. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I mean, is there any woman who doesn't want to lose weight here? Amen. Me, I want to praise God. Hallelujah. I want to come one day and you look, uh, you check me out. Uh, Pastor Mrs. Amen. Amen. It's going to happen. No, don't. Praise the Lord. Recipe for marital harmony. Let me quickly take one or two of them as we begin to go. Recipe for marital harmony. Can we read the scripture? Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 9. Your marriages are getting healed in the name of Jesus because one other reason is that it can influence where you spend your eternity. So the harmony you have at home, please nurture it. Don't let the devil steal it from you. Amen. Amen. Give allowance. Forgive in advance. Give an allowance for offenses to come. And when they come, don't make it something you cannot deal with. Praise the Lord. Some of us deal with more than that at our workplace. We deal with more than that in places with people all over the place. But we can't stand our spouses. Amen. I told a, a woman, I said, if God sent your husband to you to help him, will you throw him out? Will you not help him? I said, just uh, imagine that he's not your husband. God just put him in your, uh, in, around you to help. And she was like, eh, I will help. I said, so you even said you love this man the day you got married to him. Why not help him? Praise God. Nobody is perfect. We all have our flaws. So whatever flaws your spouse has, please make sure you help him overcome it. Praise God. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 9, the Bible says live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of thy life and thy vanity. I don't like that vanity thing because our life is not vanity. I don't know why, you know, but let's read, let's read it from easy translation. Amen. Praise. I don't know. Solomon surely had some things in mind because uh, Sam, uh, so it's Solomon, right? It's Solomon that wrote that, yes. Solomon wrote that, you know, but I, I don't know what he had in mind when he wrote that, those things. Our life is not vanity. Our life is full of, full of, you know, vigor and, 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 and success in life. Praise God. All right. Let me read from Easy Translation. It says, your life will be short and it will be difficult, but you love your wife. So enjoy your life together. That is the way to live on this earth. Say, so love your wife and live together. That is the way to live on this earth. Amen. Love her and live together. Brothers and sisters that are not married, please, as you go into marriage, it's not, you know, a lot of people begin to quarrel when there's nothing, you know, at home and the rest of them. Make up your mind that you are going to be an asset in that marriage. 
praise God. And you are going to make it work. And it will come to pass for you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Number one recipe, number one recipe for marital harmony is that you involve God in your choice. Amen. Involve God in your choice of marriage. Praise God. I hear young ladies tell me, hey, is he born again? I don't know. Does he go to church? I think so. And you have already agreed that he will live with you. I, I don't understand. Praise God. He will live with you forever and the man you don't know whether he loves God. Be sure that any man that doesn't love God can't love you. Amen. Amen. My, I, I always say it. I will say it again. My husband knows it. If I'm to choose between God and him, I will choose God first. Praise God. Not him and other men. No. God, God first, then him second. He knows. Amen. And I know too. Praise God. So before marriage, it was settled. Amen. So that if you get married and you start doing things, kale, 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 anyhow, I will tell you that God is number one. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Of course, not with anger, not with fight or anything, not with rudeness, not with, but he knows in everything you do. You know, the thing is people must know your stand even before marriage. People must know your stand. Let God be involved in your choice. Let God be involved in your choice. If you choose anyhow, you will have to stay in it anyhow. You will have to stay in it anyhow. There is nothing like you get married, you want to jump. I won't advise. There are situations now that I'm just wondering. I feel terrible about that marriage. I don't know what to tell the woman, but she made her choice. She made, God gives the best to those who leave the choice to him. God will always give the best. And if your marriage, you, are, you, are, you, you have some storm in your marriage today, I pray for you. Healing is coming for you in Jesus' name. But if you are not yet married, you have an opportunity to let God choose for you. Let God choose for you. Praise the Lord. Why should God choose for you? Because number one, that you need a spouse was God's, God's idea, not yours. That you need a partner was God's idea, not yours. Look at Adam. God, God said, you are not good alone, Adam. You are not good alone. We, you, we, you, I need a wife for you. And God created the woman and brought, he, she brought, God brought her to Adam. Amen. And there's a lesson I want to teach you that's not connected to what I'm saying today. The person that the woman first saw was God. Amen. The Bible says God made the woman out of the rib of Adam. And when he finished creating her, he presented her to the woman. So the woman first met her God. That's why God must be first in your life. And after she met, you know, he presented her. So why will women, why will women have issues? And you go do everything but go to the first man that you met. The first person you met, which, which is your, and he's the only one that has the solution. Praise the Lord. Please, don't be, don't be too lazy to go on your knees. People are no longer praying. They thank God for flames of revival. I pray that the, 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 the effect of it will not leave us in a hurry. In the name of Jesus. That you will learn to go to God and say, this is mine. This man is my own. Lord, make him the man he ought to be. Make her the woman she ought to be. You need to fight. We are soldiers. And this is not our home. We are passing through. Praise God. But on this earth is a battlefield. Fight the flesh. Fight anger. They are not the nature of God. If you are born of God, you will be like your father. Praise the Lord. Enough of marriage is breaking up, breaking up, breaking up every day. Divorce every day. That's not the idea of God. It was God's idea that Adam have a wife. And he made Eve even while Adam was asleep. Amen. So let God choose for you. Praise the Lord. And be ready to wait until he chooses for you. Praise the Lord. Be ready to wait until he chooses for you. Can I tell you the truth? It's better to... You will not be single. But it's better to remain single than to be married to someone who will give you hell on earth. It's better to be, to be single. 
and serve your God. Praise the Lord. But no one of you will be single in Jesus' name. We have released the grace for marriage in this place. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus. We are going to begin to celebrate marriages. Amen. Praise the Lord. Marriages. Marriages. Amen. And dancing and thanking God for connecting people to one another. And they will live for God in Jesus' name. Amen. Number two is that God tells the ending from the beginning. That's why you need him. He's the one that can tell. He knows where he's taking you to. He's the one that knows the right person for you. Praise God. He knows where he's taking you to. He knows the purpose he has concerning your life. Amen. There are some singers I see today. They are toiling over, over the world. They are going everywhere, you know, preaching and singing and, you know, ministering to, to souls. If they don't have a good husband, they won't go. God knows the ending from the beginning. He knows that man coming your way. So let him choose for you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Some of these principles are principles that our senior pastor has taught over and over again. Please, let it stay with us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. You know, Isaiah chapter 46 verse 10 tells us that. You know, he knows the ending from the beginning. Praise the Lord. I, you know, I, I keep, uh, okay, time will not permit me to do that. Number, uh, number three reason why you need God in your choice is that you don't know what is best for you. You don't know. You don't know. You can't even see, like the same person said one, you can't see, see the tip of your nose here. How many of you can see? Try. That's here. Try. You don't even know tomorrow. Amen. But you are serving a God that knows all things. So let him choose for you. Let him tell you that guy is the one. The one that is not maybe dark, tall, and handsome. But is short, handsome, praise God. And, and, and kind. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Complete living. Number two. Complete living for a complete cleaving. You must completely live for a complete cleaving. It's, it's a spirit, soul, and body thing. You can't get married and then you are telling your spouse, you know, something happens. He said, mm, I will call my dad. Eh, okay, I'm, I'm going to tell you. My dad will show you. You have not left, oh. Praise God. They are still with you. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. They are still with you and it ought not to be so. The people I pray for, the tribe I pray for the most is Yorubas in this area. My people. Praise God. Mother-in-laws that are Yorubas. They, especially if you marry their first son. You have to pray extra. Praise God. Because they love their first son extra. Amen. But not people like us. So praise God. You have chosen your wife. You are chosen. God bless you. We are too exposed for that. Jesus has changed us inside out. Amen. Amen. But that tribe, you know, and I don't know how it is in the Igbo tribe or other tribes. You know, there are just some tribes. They are so overprotective of their first son. Amen. And they want the woman to, ekaro, ekaso, you know, he greets every brother in the house, every small person in the house. It's a lie of the devil. Praise God. My husband told me on our wedding, they said, you are not, you are my queen. Don't kneel down. I don't want, I mean, I, I'm not against kneeling down. Praise God. Amen. To give me cake. Amen. Because some people have knelt down the first day. They never knelt down again. Oh, praise God. They just did it for show. Sure. Amen. For show. Sure. But the thing you do for show, sure, be able to do it inside the house also. Praise the Lord. So that it's not when you get into the house, say, Mike, hey, are you talking to me? Do you know who I am? Who are you? Praise the Lord. Do you know who I am? Amen. Do you know who my father is? But before the, the entire congregation, you knelt down, this is my king, to give him cake one day. But I didn't kneel, I didn't kneel down that day, oh, but I can tell you, I kneel down a lot. Whether by joke or seriousness, I do it. When I, we have clashes too once in a while, and when I know it's my fault, I go on my knees. And my husband will say, get up, get up, get up. I just want you to know that I'm sorry. Amen. I just want you to know that I'm sorry. And uh, uh, what, what pleases a man? That's why anywhere the man goes, man, he's always thinking, boom me, boom me. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise 
<laughs> Praise God. Sometimes I watch him on social media and he's saying some things about it. I say, go, brother, go, go, go. Say, amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If it's you, call, won't you like it? Amen. So people in church will say, Apostle, you've been smiling extra, extra. I said, you have your own husband with you. When I see my own, shouldn't I smile? Praise the Lord. Amen. How we smile, oh. Amen. Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 2 verse 24 says they were both naked and they were not ashamed. Oh, I beg your pardon. The, 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 the man shall leave his father and his mother. That was 20, that's 25. The father shall leave his mother and, a, and, and, and his father and shall cleave to her own wife or her own husband. Praise the Lord. And they were not ashamed. They were both naked and they were not ashamed. Praise the Lord. I did that horridly. Forgive me. In Ruth chapter 1 verse 16 to 17. You see Ruth there saying to her, to her mother-in-law, Naomi, he said, I will not leave you. I will cleave to, I mean, this is a daughter-in-law. He said, where you go, I will go. Where you die, I will die. There shall I be buried. A lady that just lost, I mean, just lost her husband, but she was ready to stay with that woman, and God honored her. What does that say to us? Whenever we make up our minds to do, to, to live for a complete living, God honors it. Praise God. And we put our husbands and our partners first. God honors and blesses us. Amen. Number three, and I will stop with that as I round up this morning. Praise God. And there, there are many of them, but let me, let, me st let me stop with this. Amen. There must be a full and frank disclosure. There must be a full and frank disclosure. In law, we say, <laughs> in law, in law, my learned colleagues are here. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. We say there must be a full and frank disclosure of every material particulars or every material facts. Amen. Am I right, ma'am? Praise God. My learned colleague. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody that cannot open up to you, the Bible says they were both naked and they were not ashamed. That man cannot, you ask him questions, singles, you ask him questions saying, what do you need that for? Huh? Red flag, sister. Amen. You tell him, ah, but you are doing it, it's none of your business. Red flag. You are starting a business, and you are already caught him, and he's starting a business, but you are not nest of king. Red flag. Praise God. What he's saying to you is that, I, I cannot disclose to you every material fact, everything about me. You can know some, but you don't have to know everything. Anybody who can share everything with you, sister, don't put your neck in that relationship. Because he will do more than that in marriage. Amen. Then you will take his phone and you say, eh? what do you want to do with my phone? Is it your business? What, why is it not her business? Praise God. Hello? I, my phone has never rang, or my husband's phone rang. And I don't have a right to pick it. It, it. it cannot happen. Praise God. It can't happen. Because there's nothing. To, even our children, they know a password on our phone. The children know it. But they don't like us knowing their own. That's another story. <laughs> That's another story. But they know our own. They will pick it and, you know, even the smallest. The ten, we say, mom, let me see your phone. I need to use it. He will open the thing and start using it. I'm like, see you. But his own iPod, small one, though I don't like him use it, praise God. You know, I, I, he doesn't want me to know. Amen. My daughter doesn't want me to know most of the time. And I'm like, if I pick her phone, say, Mommy, what are you doing with my phone? Give me my phone. I'm like, what are you hiding? Say, there's nothing to hide but give me my phone. Praise God. So why can't your husband or your wife know what is going on in your phone? What is so important in that phone, in that discussion that she shouldn't know? Praise God. And please, permit your spouse to be nosy concerning your phone. In fact, let her, let her look at you and say, mm, okay, I even thought it's something important. And you'll be smiling because she, what you are doing is that you are building her trust the more in you. But when you snatch it and say, let me have it, you can't see it. What you are saying is that I'm hiding something you shouldn't see. And even if she doesn't see what you are hiding, there is something already building up in her heart that you are hiding something from her. Or you are hiding something from him. And that's how problem begins to brood in the marriage. It begins to magnify itself gradually. Gradually and gradually. Before you know it, people bottle up so much and suddenly they bust. 
The Lord will not allow that for your marriage in Jesus' name. Let's rise to our feet this morning. Let's rise to our feet. The Lord will help us. Two cannot work together except they agree. I trust that the marital harmony will be your portion in the name of Jesus. We must learn to love and submit to one another. There is no other way. The Bible has put it clearly. There is no other way about it. The, the, don't let the world dictate to you how it should be in marriage. The Bible already said, wife, submit to your husband. Submit. The husband, love your wife. Love. Praise God. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. All right, I will stop there. You know, our pastor never finishes messages, so you can imagine. Praise God. Let's lift up our hands. I'm just going to pray. Amen. Ask God to help your marriage. You have learned some things this morning. I don't know what the Holy Spirit has dropped in your spirit. I want you to ask God to help you, to, 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 to help you with harmony in your marriage. I want you to ask, oh, Holy Spirit, to help you. Holy Spirit, let there be harmony in my marriage. In the name of Jesus. I don't know if there is a storm, if there, if there is problem in your marriage. You can say it to God right now. You can take it to the Lord in prayers and say God intervene in the name of Jesus. One other thing is that you must learn to worship together. When you worship together and you pray together, you think alike. You discuss the same kind of things. I want you to pray and say God help me. If you are not yet married, let God help me to wait for your choice in the name of Jesus. Lord, whatever red signal is in the life of that man or that woman, help me to see it. Help me not to make a mistake. Simplify the process for me, Lord. In the name of Jesus, and Encourage me, strengthen me. Lord God Almighty, make it easy for me. In the name of Jesus, Lord, help me. I need your grace. Oh, husband, pray for your wife. Pray for your wife. I don't know the flaw in the life of that your wife. You can take it to the Lord in prayers and say, Father, I want you to intervene. I want you to change my wife. I want you to change my husband. Help us to live together in harmony so that together we can bring forth godly children that will perpetrate the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus. That is the reason, one of the reasons for marriage. God wants us to bring up godly children. I want us to pray. God loves marriages. God loves marriages. I want us to pray, God, let your sweet wine come upon my marriage this morning in the name of Jesus. Let there be peace. Let there be joy. Don't just jump out of that marriage. Don't just give up on your marriage. Fight for your marriage. Fight for your marriage in the name of Jesus. That man you are refusing to pray because you have already given up. I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus. Let the Spirit of God overshadow you and grant you the grace for forgiveness in the name of Jesus. Every unforgiveness in you, I command in the name of Jesus. I break it by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. You will begin to love that woman, she will begin to love you. She she will desire you. She will respect you. In the name of Jesus, every weakness in her life, God will remove it for you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We give you praise. 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 There's a couple here. Your child, your child is the one that is actually bringing the challenge in your marriage because he has a challenge. He has a challenge and he's bringing so much problem between you and your husband and you cannot agree. In fact, every time you are looking at each other as if he is responsible and she's responsible. I pray for that child today in the name of Jesus that the siege over that child is broken in the name of Jesus that both of you will come together and you'll be able to fight for that child and you will see victory in that home in the name of Jesus. Thank you my father. We give you praise Lord. Father I pray for every marriage. I pray for your peace and harmony. I pray for your joy. I pray for strength to tarry. I pray for grace, oh God, Father, to walk together and fulfill destiny together. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father, for the singles in the house. I ask, oh God, as many of them that are believing you, Lord, to settle down in their home. I ask that, Lord, you will do a quick work for them and you will simplify the process in the name of Jesus that none of you will make a mistake in marriage. In the name of Jesus, none of you will make a mistake in marriage. 
That boy you are going out with, you know he's not born again. Let him go. You have been with him for years. Let him go. Let him go. The number of years is not what matters. But the fact that both of you can fulfill and that is God's choice for you. That's what matters. He's not God's choice for you. Let him go. You are too precious. Thank you, my father. We give you praise this morning. We exalt your name. Let your name continually be glorified. In Jesus' name I will pray.